Knowledge-based coaching in floorball is the topic, so I leave the floor to you. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Oscar, and nice to be here. Nice to have all of you here present, and also those who are, uh, are online at home. Uh, so here we are with John, hello, <laughs> uh, to discuss a bit about knowledge-based management. Uh, for me, the importance of data-driven management uh, became clear when I made my MBA studies uh, on business development and leadership a couple, couple years ago. And uh, throughout the studies, it was proven uh, that the old fashioned, I think, I know this, is not good enough in the modern world. So, if you want to succeed, uh, your decisions must be based on relevant knowledge and also on anal analytics. Okay, John, a uh, couple words about the knowledge in general at first. Well, I mean, if you have to define, if you have to define knowledge by a, a clearly scientific way, it's a question of, of uh, of facts, information and skills acquired through some kind of experience or education and the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject in general. Uh, and then, of course, it's, it's very important to understand that, that in order to, be to define knowledge-based management, it means that you have to be able to make a decision based on the correct information, which is acquired by analyzing the data you have and, and it's also not only the awareness or the familiarity of the gain experience, but also the fact of a situation that you actually can understand. So traditionally in business, the knowledge-based management is quite often too easily seen as a support function, creating dashboards or, or reports as such. But in coaching, I think the more important part is, is, uh, is to understand and see the different topics and, and issues that there are in uh, in the data and the data collection and also to understand more about what's happening so if you only look at one thing you will only get an answer to one thing and also then seeing the things so karina but but what do you think from your experience what's the downsides of this when the analyst side is not properly used at all uh yeah i would say that the analysis part is very essential uh in the data driven management uh, if you only use the reports and the dashboards, uh, then you only see the history. And of course, it's also important to understand the causation be behind the things. Uh, but, but this way, the diagnostics only gives the reason for what already has happened. Uh, it can be described like the look in the rear way mirror. You only look backwards, not for forward. Okay, but how to improve? Uh, what if the approach would be to turn the focus on the future? Uh, with analytics, this is possible. Uh, so instead, we should focus on what the analytics tells us. What can we learn to predict uh, the effect of our actions and de decisions? Uh, the predictive analytics, uh, they mean making forecast models based on historical data. Uh, so predictive uh, analytics, they give us information what will happen, not, not on the uh, behind, so looking to the future. Uh, and the algorithms, they are used in the predictive analytics. Uh, an example from the HR world, uh, when give, given enough data about the sick, uh, sick leave, uh, it's possible to predict the absences for the coming year. So that's very valuable in the, in the business world. Um, or in the traffic, you can use predictive analytics uh, to forecast when the train will come to the station. Uh, when, then the algorithm, it will calculate uh, the overall status of the train traffic, maybe the weather and other factors. Uh, and based on that, the algorithm will give a prediction of the arrival time. Okay, but let's go back to sports. Uh, thinking about coaching, uh, how can you reflect the predictive analysis there, John? Well, if you only f if you only focus on 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 one element of your game, and and analyze that and only reinforce that, you will not actually have the tools to react if the awful opponent 
would have read what you are trying to do or already figured out how to to play against it so so the importance is actually to combine the the prediction part which is based on the analysis so if you see for example Miko Palvalin will later during the seminar explain the analysis and the very inter interesting anal uh, study he's doing on 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 the way of forechecking and the difference between an an initiative forechecking and awaiting forechecking and what the effects will be but that doesn't itself only be the answer to anything you still need to understand that that what and how to use the, the information you receive so so understanding the general point of what you are analyzing and and then gives you a knowledge management knowledge based management means that data analysis is striving to solve the question on hand so the key here is still is what data do you have and how can you easily analyze it okay repetition of data if you, the more data you have the more so to say the, the less there is the possibility of chance and there also you can quite easily make analysis seeing okay if i open the open like this i go, try to go through the right or I try to, to go through the, the left then it will lead up to the fact that that i will be in a situation where this and this happens okay from there you can in principle with easy models like quite easy models calculate what the prediction would be for you to succeed but the idea is that you don't necessarily in a game have the possibility you can make a plan of how you're going to play and you can have a plan of what you do if the the opponent reacts in this and this way but it will be much better uh, uh, if you can so to say foresee and see based on when you have played in a certain way what has the opponents done regardless if you're not looking at the one opponent but see what they have done and then so to say from there combine an answer of how you should react and do it on, on the data so so to make the right decision you need the right data because data is always and data collection is always steering you towards the answer you will get but but then Karina what kind of different types of sport data actually are there in in the world yeah uh, on the football side, we have Ville Pekka Inkila, who is the Finnish Football Federation's knowledge based management specialist. And he has studied the subject a lot. Uh, and he defines uh, sport data into three types. Uh, first, we have the load and recovery data. Uh, this, this measures, for example, the heart rate, uh, the movement repetition and the sleep, sleep data. Then we have the performance data. Uh, it can be divided into event uh, data, meaning that the events on the field around the ball, and, and then to the exact location information uh, uh, of the players and the ball, so where exactly everyone is moving. And then third one is the practice data. And that means that what, how much, when have you been practicing. So story, storing that data is also very valuable. Um, okay, some insights, Sean, how to use this kind of information. Well, uh, first of all, Inkela stresses in, 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 in the article he wrote is, is often too easy to find truths in statistics and, and which he actually calls delta, uh, data alchemy. And alchemy is, of course, the fact that the, the, the idea of how to try to cre create gold out of nothing. Statistics works quite well in in in, re in, in when, when you have reoccurring events you can measure so to say you can measure uh, how successful are you in passing how successful are you in in taking shots on goal how successful are you in creating goal scoring opportunities and possibilities so so it's it's pretty easy when the data there is one data point you are looking at one factor of the game you are trying to analyze the problem actually becomes more a little bit more uh, bigger when you are trying to find uh, uh, chains of data. So you want to see when you are, for example, trying to open the game and, and you want to see what happens, what the players are doing and connecting these data points together. And there, you so to say, you need then to be able to, to have two more, more defined tools, more better tools, because otherwise there is an extreme amount of, of issues that needs to be calculated. So from my point of view, I would say it's an, it's an essential to combine 
the analyzed statistical data with other data you and your opponents from your and your opponents teams so for example if you have uh, an idea of of how you're going to play when the when the series starts next weekend and or to the, the game today how is for example tps in the women's game uh, going to open the game uh, uh, as 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 a tps coach or a, or a pss coach in this case the interesting is, is so to say, to see, okay, in order to be able to combine the data we have of how we have opened, that's the rear view mirror perspective, we also need to look upon the fact that, okay, what does the opponent do? How do they react to our way of playing? And based on that, you need to analyze their game of what they do, in, in what, what they are trying to do, and what the reaction is. So you combined the, the events data, okay, if you have movement data, if you have knowledge about the, your players' capabilities of running, passing, shooting, et cetera, et cetera, you can combine these data and then start to build a map. But, but without analyzing, so to say, the opponent's performance and their way of playing with and compare it with your own playing and then building the ideas from there, you will have a quite difficult time, so to say, only by data analysis uh, and if you don't have ready-made ideas of what the reaction will be, it becomes a little bit problem. So, so here comes back to the knowledge management and, and knowledge-based management is the fact that the question of using data in combination with experiences, and then also, so to say, have the, the theoretical frame to analyze what will happen if I do like this and what is the knowledge I have about that. Then, of course, in a game, a lot of different things can happen. The ball bounces, the player the player has to move their the opponent's movements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where, of course, the the whole idea of using the three different forms of of data is is quite important to have that and to combine that. And of course, there are more and more analytical tools on the market. You can get, so to say, much faster by just using. Do even during the game, you can get much faster ideas. But it's still the the I think Inkela's point is quite important that it, you, can, you will find the truths in the statistics if you are looking for it. And the old, so to say, old term within internet computing called Visivug, which is what you see is what you get, is very important to remember. But if we turn a little bit around, what kind of things can we then predict with data analysis in floorball? And, and what should we be looking for, Karina? Uh, well, uh, in team sports, there are so many changing factors that making exact stati statistical models to predict a single event during a floorball game is very, very difficult. Uh, the amount of data collected uh, from team sports is only a small fraction of the events on the field. Uh, Inkil has made a comparison in football that you can compare the event data uh, to a flashlight pointing to the ball. You can see the events within the beam, but outside the beam there is loads of information which is not recorded and not stored. Uh, and it's not taken in consideration in statistics. So that's why it's really, really combined, uh, difficult to look at or predict the exact what's happening. But however, uh, the analytics, they can give insights uh, what is probable, what is actionable, and that can be very helpful. Uh, most usually, the event data is used in situations which are typically very similar. Uh, for example, the header situations uh, in football or passes near next to the opposite goal. Uh, in these types of situations, it is possible to make re reliable models. Um, and the data analysis, it, it's more, more and more used in sports in different forms. So uh, let's take some examples from there. Uh, John, how can you use uh, the data analysis to help you to win the game? Well, an easy example, if, 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 it, okay, it's, if, if it's time is not an issue, but for example, if, if you do by using a tool, whatever kind of, of, of tool that actually records so to say, the happenings on the field of play. Let's say that 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 you are going to play in a playoff series or a, or or a one-off game like today. One way of doing that and and trying to find the situation is, for example, to look 
and, and do an analysis of, of where are, so to say, the problems of the defending team, of your opponent. How do they defend? What formation are they using? How do they react to certain things? And then try to see where the opponents in previous game, just by using either read from videos or if you can get the data automated, then it would be much easier. But usually collecting the data as, as such from, from, uh, uh, from videos or, or spreadsheets or something in order to be able to see, let's say, for example, if you come in from the right side, the, 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 the opponent's left defender is reacting in a certain way when you enter uh, or go over a certain line of defense or for example where is the spaces where is the spaces how does the for example you come in from the right how does the left forward how does he react where where does she or she play in in relationship to where the ball is being carried and and then by having enough data points looking by enough data points you can start to build your own idea of where you can go in okay then based on that when you have you have a certain setup for how your team is playing and how they want to, how you want them to play, th then you can start to find the spots on the field where, so to say, is is a, is a trigger area where we should have a bigger possibility of actually being able to create uh, uh, a serious goal scoring opportunity. But then, then on the way, that's just one way. What, how do you, Karin? What do you think? What is the way then to utilize data analysis in regard of, of individual players? Uh, in the professional sport, the data of players is example used uh, for recruiting new players. Uh, this was first uh, started in baseball, uh, where the use of analytics uh, in building teams became popular. When a team with really small budget, uh, it was able to collect su successful team. And their advantage was that the, uh, the use of stati statistical player analy analysis instead of the traditional uh, feeling-based selection. So they kind of prove that if you, if you use analytics to choose the players to make a really good team, you can beat uh, money in, in some cases. Uh, so uh, tra traditional feeling-based selection when combining the team, it's not good to use only that. Of course, you also, also uh, have feelings and, and use those also, but, but the analytics can give a real advantage in the side. Uh, then uh, the coaches can get help from analytics in also choosing the team roster for the day uh, uh, based on their opponent, what kind of players would, uh, would be successful against this team. But as we know in floorball and in team sports, also in many, uh, many factors have an effect. So uh, in this case, case, when you think about the rosters, it's usually only you can use the analytics as a, as a backup or uh, addition to the de decision making. It's not really wise to do the decision based only on those. <laughs> uh, and then another example about the prediction and players. Uh, uh, one thing that is really common in, in the world nowadays, it's the, it concerns the injury, pre injury prevention. So uh, with analytics, it's possible to predict uh, which, players, uh, which players have higher risk to get injured on, on a certain way. And based on the analytics, uh, then they can uh, get some uh, special training program to, uh, to strengthen certain physics and therefore lower the injury risk. And this is, of course, very important for the team because uh, when you have all the players uh, that can be used, it's, it's always better when you have a lot of injured players. So this gives a lot of value also. Okay, John, uh, then how about training the uh, team? How does that data analysis uh, help with the practices? Well, the same example as I just used, if you, if you want to know where the trigger points are, where you want to go in, the idea is, of course, then to start training certain openings or certain defense formations so that you, you actually train against like the probability that you are trying to find a way of analyzing what we need to do and then starting to, to change the, the, the approach of, of the practice in that way so that you know what, what, what can be done. And, and here the importance is that you have to remember that the, the, the uh, transition rate of what you practice into the games is not an automation just because you practice something it doesn't happen you don't get the whole 
the whole line to do the same thing at the same time very easily. So therefore, it's important also to explain to the players that what we are trying to do and how we are trying to achieve certain things. But let's move into the last topic, or, or, which was the pitfalls of knowledge-based management. So Karina, how do you see that? Yeah, uh, the knowledge-based management, it can give a lot of opportunities, but without the understanding of the importance of the predictive analytics, it's not easy to collect the advantages. Uh, the first pitfall I would like to point out is the quality of the data. Uh, if the data is too old or too generic, it's not possible to do the prediction. For example, in a match, uh, if you need the data how the opponent team is playing in order to solve uh, how to break through their defense, uh, it's not accurate enough if you know how in teams in general build their defense, or even if you know how the team built their defense last season. So the, uh, you must have recent and accurate data in order to uh, make the predictive anal analytics. Uh, then the second uh, pitfall concerns the question setting. Uh, if you only focus on the problem in question and avoid looking at the bigger picture, uh, then uh, the problem of your uh, the problem that you are analyzing it start to uh, affect or steer the results you will get. So therefore, it's very important uh, to have different data sources uh, in order to get uh, a bigger overview of the situation. Uh, okay, John. Then something about external and internal data. Well. I think the most important thing is that internal data is easy to collect. It's easy to manage. You, you can you have a lot of times when you can get it, so you can get a lot of internal data. The problem with internal data is that it, it's only telling you what you are. It's more a review review mirror of, of way of looking upon it. I, I think the, this example will be cl quite clearly visible in the in the examples that Mika Palabalin will give, provide you later in the in the seminar. The focus, of course, is when you have external data is also not only that you can start looking into the crystal ball, you can start looking in what is the probability of us being possible to do something and create something here and, and how do we change it. And therefore, like like data collection also during games is very important. And the, the fact of the analytical tools to use that to create that data into more, more so to say, uh, uh, more tangible ways of looking of how you can done. And, and uh, uh, but, but here is also very important what the attitude of the coach, the coaching team is to data collection, analytics, and the thing you get out of it. Because there are quite many who say, oh, yeah, I know that, I know that, I have seen it. So if we go from there, Karen, what do you think about this? Yeah, well, in order to use the knowledge of the, or the, or the knowledge-based management, uh, the coaching team must be open to develop their ways of work and also willing to develop uh, and adopt, adopt new, new things. Uh, it's not possible to take the advantages uh, if, you, if your decisions are based on feelings, if you're thinking about professional guesses, if you, if you only use, use the faith that I know how this works, so then it's not possible. This kind of culture must be changed first. And uh, usually it's done by showcasing the benefits of predictive analytics. So that's one pitfall you can fall into. And then uh, another one, uh, it's in coaching, it's also having too narrow angle. If you only analyze the factors that you are building your own game on, uh, then you will only have answers on that. And th in this case, you don't get any, any uh, answers how the opponent has reacted to them. And that's pretty important factor also. So you also have to have different angles. Okay, uh, any other pitfalls, John? Well, I, I would say that, uh, what God said in one movie, it takes two to tango. And you have to think about the fact that there is always two teams playing a game. So the animal analysis must be based on both of them and understanding of, of in order for you to be able to enhance your own game and, and making it better, you need to understand what the opponent is trying to do, what it's doing and how it affects your team and where the pitfalls for you are. So. So also the question is, of course, then, then that, that there is this risk of over managing the, the situation by based on, on what data knowledge you have. 
But the, the, the analysis requires, I think that's the important learning point. It's also, it's not enough to just know the, what, what data there is, but it's also learn, learning how to transform the data into actions and tangible actions, separating the important pieces of information and then packing it up because there is so much information available. You can collect so much information. And if you have an analytical tool, so you do movement data, you will, you will be overflowing. So then to, to find the real importance and flow it, the information to the team in order for them to be able to tra transition it on the field of play. I think that is maybe the key learning and also the importance of understanding of, of how to use knowledge-based data and information in, in managing a coaching team. Yeah, uh, in the end, I would like to stress the three things. Uh, first, distribute the information about knowledge-based management and predictive analytics. Then second, uh, start to collect the data systematically. That's almost the most important thing. And then uh, make sure you have a skillful technology partners to help you to analyze the data and make predictions. And this way, I think there is a good way to, for success. OK. All right. Thank you, Karina. John, I, I actually have a couple of questions for you. You mentioned having an open mind being, yeah. of course, uh, an important thing. How often do you think that is a problem when you approach us coaches? Because we always know everything anyway. Well, I think coaches are someone that you really have to persuade. You have to uh, show so the, uh, to, get the, the, to get the message clear. But that is one, one really real challenge. Or what would you say, John? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that the number of coaches who have said that, yeah, but I know it. And I don't trust them. Or the data is wrong. That would be the best. <laughs> and of course, you yourself haven't ever done that. I mean, you, I know you've coached for, I don't know, 30 years or something, among many other things. Uh, how have things changed in your coaching if you, you look at all the analysis and all the data you can nowadays have that maybe you didn't have in the 1990s? But probably the number of mistakes made before, before you had more data was much huger, but, but the ex basic experience of data use was in was with the na women's national team in, in for the World Football Championships in Bowling A99 when we, with the coaching team, with Mika Mokonen, the head coach, and, and, and Risto Talonen and Atte Juuti, uh, we actually decepted Sweden and Switzerland so carefully that we actually knew everything. We, we had watched all the games possible. And based on that, uh, maybe that gave me the learning that that, that you can never have too little data and, and, and look too little about what the players are doing. But I mean, with the data today and, and with the possibility of getting it in seconds, it, it has changed the whole thinking way. Thank you, John. Thank you, Karina. Very interesting uh, topic, uh, of course. And now.